you are not a job seeker. You're a salesperson. Your resume is not just a job search document. Your resume is a marketing document. And if your resume is effective, it will result in a job interview. So step one, you create an effective resume so that you can market your experience, your education, your skills, and that will hopefully get you a job interview. Now, at a job interview, it's face to face, whether it's on a Zoom call or a Skype call or in person. It's still live for the most part in most cases. And that's where you are selling yourself. So it's a two step process. First, marketing and second, sales. So as a job seeker, it doesn't matter if you're in IT, if you're an engineer, if you're in hospitality, if you're in sales or if you're um, in any type of uh, career field. If you're looking for a job, you are a salesperson and the product is you. So I'd like you to shift your perspective away from job seeker and towards sales. So now we're going to use this sales analogy to help me explain why it's so important that you think of yourself as a salesperson selling your skills, your accomplishments, your education. So let me give you a sales analogy. In the past, I used to be in corporate sales, so I know that world really, really well. So as a service provider, a company that provides services, the salespeople in that company have two options. Option number one, and two options for looking for customers to sell their products to. So the first option is to be proactive, to actually go out and cold call. Cold calling means you're reaching out to people or to other companies who could possibly use your product or service. And in order to be an effective cold caller, now cold calling doesn't just mean getting on the phone and calling people you don't know. I mean, that used to be the case uh, before the internet. That's the only way you could do it aside from writing letters. But phone calls were the most effective. These days, you can have many other types of ways of contacting people you don't know in other companies, such as um, Facebook, LinkedIn is probably the most uh, popular one right now. Phone is still very effective. Uh, any type of social media works as well. So getting back to the sales analogy, you are a salesperson working for a company. The company in this case is you. And you're reaching out to people to try to sell the product, which is you. And how are you going to approach them? Well, a lot of research is involved. You have to know what your customer or your future customer wants. What are their wants? What are their needs? In order for you to solve your customers or your future customers' problems, in order for you to meet their needs, you have to match what you have meaning your skills, uh, your accomplishments, and your ability to do different things in different fields. You have to take those things and match them with the needs and the wants and the problems that your customers might have. Now you can see that in order to be able to make that match, you need to research. You need to find out what they want and how important it is to them. So that's one side of sales, is actually being proactive, reaching out. The other side of sales is passive. So cold calling, which I just described, is active. What I'm going to describe to you right now is passive. A company salesperson or a company or, or, or any business 
might receive something called in sales an RFP, an RFP, which is a request for proposal. Now, a request for proposal comes from your future possible customer. So that company has a need, they have a want, they have some sort of a problem and they need it fixed. So they document in detail what they need. And if it's the government, they have a special website where they post their RFPs and service providers and companies can then go to that website and respond to the request for proposal. How do they respond? Well, they send a proposal. So they receive the RFP or they see it on the website. They read it in detail. They see, okay, this company or this government department needs this and this and this and this. What we're going to do is we're going to look at what we make, what we provide, what we can give them to solve their problems. So they take a document called a proposal and they write exactly what they can do for that company or for that government um, department, what experience they have doing these things for other companies, social proof. They put it together in a nice document and they send it out to the government department or the company that has generated the request for proposal. Are you starting to see the similarity between a job seeker and a sales company? Let me help you make that connection. As a job seeker, the typical job seeker who has a resume and goes and starts looking at websites like Indeed or LinkedIn and then finds a job advertisement and then sends their cover letter or resume to that company. Well, that's the same as a company replying to an RFP, a company replying to a request for a proposal by sending a proposal. It's the same thing and it's passive because you're waiting. In the company example, the company is waiting for the right request for proposal. What I mean by right is that so that they can, oh, this, this matches the services and the things that we provide. And so we're going to send a proposal. You as the job seeker see the job advertisement and you say, hey, I have what this job advertisement is looking for. My experience, my skills, my education match. So I'm going to send a resume and cover letter. And like I said, this is passive because it involves waiting. The first example I gave you, the proactive, the active example is where you don't wait for the RFP. You don't wait for the request for proposal. You actively go out and find out what the company needs. And you want to see if you can somehow meet their needs. The passive example with the RFP and the request for proposal and then sending the proposal has a much lower chance of being successful because your potential future customer is dictating the rules. They are creating the box and now you have to fit yourself into that box. With the active example, where you go out and search for possible needs and wants and problems that you can solve, you're making the rules. So let me see if I can summarize this. So on the left side of, of the note, you can see I wrote passive, and that is the RFP example, where you're waiting for the RFP, or when you're a job seeker, you're waiting for the right job advertisement to show up so that you can respond to it. This is passive. On the right side, you can see I wrote the word active. This is where you are reaching out to the company to learn about them and then offering them a solution that you have. In this case, the solution is your experience, your skills, your education, 
what you can do for them. So in the typical job seeker situation, in the typical job seeker situation, you are dependent on the possible future employer creating a job advertisement that matches what you have to offer. You're dependent on some external source. And it's never good to be overly dependent on anyone or anything because the more dependent you are, the less power you have. You want to increase your power, right? So in this case, active means you reach out. You reach out to the employer. And so in this case, you're independent. You have more power in this case. It's empowering. You make the rules in this case. In addition, if you're a job seeker and you're just responding to job advertisements, you are also reactionary. You're also reactionary. And when you're reaching out, you are actually proactive. And this is really important because being proactive is a very positive character strength. And employers really value that. You may have seen that many employers write in their job descriptions, or maybe you've heard it in college or university or school or throughout any other of your experiences, that employers are looking for people who are proactive, who take initiative, who have leadership qualities. Now, you don't have to be a leader to show leadership qualities. This could be evident in the way you work, in uh, the initiative you take to solve problems, and so on. And typically, there is only a finite number of job advertisements at any time. There is a limited number of job advertisements at any time, especially if you consider only the small subset of job advertisements that match your experience, your education, and your skills, which means it encourages a mindset of scarcity. You're limited by the number of job advertisements that match your qualifications. But in the active, the reaching out strategy, it's actually a mindset of, let me see if I can spell correctly. It's a mindset of abundance because there are many, many more companies that you can work at compared to the number of job advertisements. And within each of the company that you may be able to work in, there are a lot of different potentials where you can add your skills and experience. So this is really important. Look at this again, the left and the right side, the passive, job seeker, which is most job seekers, you know, because why? Because it's easy. It doesn't require commitment. It doesn't require planning. Well, it does, but not to the extent that planning an active reach out campaign involves. So it's much easier to sit at your computer or your laptop or whatever device you use and simply scroll through job advertisements compared to the right side where you're researching many different things like companies that interest you, like uh, the names uh, of man department managers or the names of certain directors within the company that are, that are responsible for the area in which you'd be able to work at. So it's really important to look at these things compared to these things and see that, you know what, in any type of company, 
this is what hiring managers want. They want people who are active, who are independent, who are proactive, who have a mindset of abundance. And hiring managers don't want someone with a mindset of scarcity, people who are reactionary. So if there's a problem, then they react. They want people who um, prevent problems. They don't want people who are dependent. They want people who are independent. And they don't want people who are passive. Again, they want people who take initiative. So when I talk about changing your mindset, when I talk about changing your perspective, I want you to get out of this mindset and get into this mindset. And I'm going to color this green because that's what we want. And I'm going to color this red because that's what we want to get away from. So this is what I mean by changing your mindset. And at the beginning of this conversation, I mentioned that this is like a company waiting for a request for a proposal to come along and then they create a proposal that meets the needs of the RFP and they have to kind of fit themselves into the box that the hopefully future customer dictates. Meanwhile, here, you are the driver. You are the person controlling the situation. So even before you submit any type of job application, you are already demonstrating these positive character traits that you have. And it doesn't matter if you are a dishwasher at a restaurant, if you're an engineer, if you're a computer programmer, if you're um, a nurse, or if you are a salesperson, if you're a manager, if you're a director, it doesn't matter. These things apply that I just discussed. These things are extremely important. So this is what I mean by changing your mindset. And I'd like you to consider doing that. So like I said, the, this part here is what most people do. More than 90% of job seekers. This is how you differentiate yourself from the competition.